Today is the big day and the market is starting to show its nerves. I'm recording this video before we get non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate. Those I've been talking about for weeks now as major catalysts. And today, man, oh man, and it's a Friday. Why do they do this stuff to us on Fridays? It's uh, it's pretty crazy to me. So we're going to take a look at the charts for NVIDIA, SPY, QQQ, IWM. Going to give an update on TMF as well. And then we'll just spot in Tesla and Bitcoin throughout this video just to see where the prices are at. You can see the nervousness in the market. Talk about where it could potentially go depending on the results that we get. So this is mostly about the technicals that you get and what to expect. So we're kicking things off with NVIDIA. And where we're at with NVIDIA right now, we closed yesterday at 107 at 21 in the pre-market, we're at 105. And if we drop the technicals up there, you can see that we are sitting right on top of support down here at my price target of 105. And uh, we definitely, we hit it. We're still kind of sitting at it. We got that big fat support area sitting there waiting for us. And um, it's a good thing. If we actually drop down to an hourly view, you can see even more detail about how we've been riding along that and how we've been sort of range bound between 105 and about 108. Some peekaboos up above, some peekaboos down below, but mostly just stuck here for the past couple trading days, just probably waiting for likely today or sometime next week. But I got to say, today's today's big enough, depending on what results we get, if we're far away from that 4.3 in either direction on the unemployment rate, or if non-farm payrolls come in surprisingly high or surprisingly low, uh, we're going to take big movements. movements. NVIDIA is probably no exception in that. So if we move over to SPY from where we're at here on NVIDIA, which by the way, NVIDIA, uh, if we get Positive news, honestly, we could come up here and retest this resistance uh, if we bounce from this location, if that support holds up. And that can take us all the way up to at least 114 at the top of this, or I should say at least 112 up to 114. And anything that's not red or green in here, those are those free flow or free fall areas. So we're going to be on the, the lookout for those. And you can pause this video and you can take a look at the different values that are on screen, zoom in on the screenshot, all that kind of stuff. If you want to see my technicals, they are available over at the Patreon in the Discord through that Patreon. The link's down in the description. And if you guys want to learn to do technical analysis yourself, there's a link for a course down there as well. Use the code word doctor when you sign up. We'll talk more about that later. Over to SPY. Uh, right now, pre-market hours, we're actually down below the 50 EMA and SMA. EMA in red, SMA in blue. And this is a 5 and a 13 that are on here as well. Down below that, and then what we get for the RSI, the RSI yesterday's close, 48, so down below that 50. But I'm telling you, we can't necessarily rely on that too much until we have today's numbers, and that could really whip our heads around on this one. So we just want to watch and see what those numbers come out as, because likely they're going to tell us a lot about the future direction that we have, especially in the near term. Are we going to continue to sink down through September? Or is it one we're going to have a bit more of a rally happening? So here are the lines that we have to look at. Let me really stretch this out for you so that you can see with a little bit less noise as to what's on screen here. So in the pre-market, we're down near this support down here at just north of 546, 546.19, almost at that support line. We have support all the way down to about 543 before the free fall happens for us. Up to the top side of this, you can see that we have 550 as resistance and also these moving averages are also resistance, by the way, coming in about 547. And then also... Actually, to the upside of this, if we look to the upside, we hit resistance right around, like I said, 551, but then we also have it at 553, all the way up to a 559, nearly to 560. There's any amount of resistance that happens in there. That's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a difficult time to have a huge travel to the upside on SPY, but I do believe if we get encouraging numbers with jobs that kind of refute recessionary pressures, then we have to the upside. If they confirm recessionary pressures, well, then I think we could see a pretty sharp move to the downside uh, throughout a lot of the market. Moving over to the Qs, you can see we're down below these previous two candles, going to gap down on us. But like I said, the 8.30 hour is coming. When that happens, that'll really determine if we really drop further. The market does love to fill gaps, by the way. So at some point in time, we'd likely fill that. But that that's too far in the future, too speculative. We got to see what happens today. If we fall to the downside of this, we're not too far away from this 200 day, which could be a pretty good bounce zone for us. But if we saw that back here with the carry trade, if we do fall down below it and hit our heads on it, then we could travel even further south. To the upside of this, we got to watch the 50 EMA and SMA in red at about 467 and 472. 
slapping the technicals up here on this one, you can see just how much we have to fight through to get back up to the 50 days. And even so, there's any amount of resistance to the upside before we actually get a really nice uh, free float area from about 503 up to about 530 with this trend line coming across the top. So a uh, lot to watch out for today. Uh, if we do fall to the downside, you can see the price targets that I have on here. If we move to the upside, you can also see those price targets. And I'll leave those on there for your viewing pleasure. IWM also looking nervous, by the way, catching on to the low price that we had yesterday, down below the 50 EMA and SMA and also the five crossing over the 13. When you have the faster moving averages crossing down over the slower moving averages, that is a bearish thing. But like I said, we can't make too much of this until we have those 830 numbers. So you watch 830 happen. And well, if we get those strong and encouraging numbers, you'll know that because we'll be up above this trend line here and we'll be heading back to 216, maybe to 219 in the near future. If we get weak numbers, things that are going to, well, I should say strongly negative numbers, so for unemployment and a week for uh, non-farm payrolls, those are ones that can send us down quickly through this support that you see on here, most likely activating these price targets to the downside of 206, 198, 195 over time, especially between now and the election. To the upside of this, if, uh, if we see Goldilocks confirmed, now we're starting to move pretty far away from this price target up here of 228. Let me see if I have the other ones on screen for you. Let me zoom out a little bit. Looks like I need to put those back on. I will tell you what they are. Can't imagine that I deleted them. I wonder what happened to them. Anyway, to the upside of this, uh, 216, 219, and then breaking above 220, 221, it's it's gonna be real choppy through there. You can see that before. Yeah, we had a quick climb, choppy little fall on that. Uh, to the upside, I think is gonna be difficult, even with Goldilocks on this one. I think there's still a lot of questions out there for us in 2000, but I do think that we get out of that strong move up. And uh, you guys can see just the amount of <laughs> crazy information that I have on here. But I'll tell you what, it really does work out for the price targets. We're going to have to watch and see what we get. All right, let's wrap this thing up with uh, TMF, Tesla, and Bitcoin. So TMF, uh, my price target of $62, uh, it has hit for us in the pre-market hours this morning. Uh, we'll check out these technicals that I have on here, shared with my Discord members, my community members, again, available through the Patreon if you want to see these ahead of time. We have had a call option on this one. Cashed out yesterday because I didn't want the coin flip on that. I still have my shares in TMF hanging on to those. And, uh, and we'll see what happens over time. I do think that we're going to continue to see upward pressure. Critical support on this is about $58, almost $59. And we have very strong support also down here at about $53.47. We're to watch for that. And we are currently out the top of this consolidation pattern that you see on screen in front of you. So with the highs coming down, the lows coming up, and we're just barely breaking to the upside. But 830 is really going to be that determination if we get uh, recessionary type numbers. So weak non-farm payrolls and high unemployment. Well, we're going to see these uh, upper price targets that we have here hit. And it's going to be a great day for anybody who's holding on to TMF. If we get ones that come in kind of uh, kind of weak for us, low unemployment and high non-farm payrolls, we're probably going to see pressure come back down on this, but we'll see upward pressure on the markets. So I do have hedge positions in my portfolio. TMF is one of them. Cashed out part of that hedge yesterday, worked out beautifully for a nice 39% gain after just holding on to the call option for a couple days. Uh, so I'll take that one. The shares also rolling up nicely from where we're at right now. And then also my long positions that I have have also fared pretty well. And if it's something to say long-term hold for me, then as most of them are, such as NVIDIA, Tesla, uh, SoFi is also out there. They're still doing very all right from the time that I started investing. So uh, just keep on adding to those over time. And those are ones that as they sell off, they're ones that are where, where I just buy more shares. So uh, just to touch on Tesla quickly, Tesla also seeing a little bit of nervousness this morning, down from the close at 230, down to 228 in the pre-market hours. But much of what I said, Goldilocks scenario, we're going to see this price pump. And if we're going to see recessionary pressures instead, we'll probably see this fall off, possibly even breaking back down uh, below this 50 period SMA that we previously had as support for us that we just broke over that. And you can see the technicals that I have. And as a matter of fact, I have price targets on this as well. Let me slide them over so you can actually see them on screen here. These are ones that we actually hit both the first and second price targets. Goldilocks confirmed we have room up to this 242. If we can break out of this resistance into that free flow area from 234, we can see that $8 rise to 242 becoming a very strong possibility as we have a lot of bullish signals right now for Tesla. We just need the economic reports coming up for us, including 830 today and then inflation reports next week 
to be on our side for Tesla. That can really continue to uh, to keep things rocking for a little while longer, especially because we have put in a higher high. We just barely peekabooed up above this previous high on Tesla with this one, but we did close down below, and now we're actually back down below some of the other resistances that we have. So, like I said, some nervousness in the market, and uh, and that's to be expected. It's kind of hard to do options trades on it because by the time the market opens, which is one hour after we receive the big reports today, things could be wildly different than what we see. And it could be that coin flip moment, which is one of the reasons why I sold off that call option on TMF yesterday. I wanted to lock in the gains that I had. I was up 40%. I went bird in hand on it because if we get something surprisingly favorable today, that would have been bad for that position. And then I would have uh, stood to lose money. I couldn't do anything about it until after the market opened because it was an option. They're only available to trade during the regular market hours. Guys, if you want to see my buys and sells, you want to be part of my community. If you want to support the channel and the work that I do, see the technicals before they hit YouTube. The link down in the description for the Patreon will take you over to the Discord that I have. So sign up for Patreon, jump over to Discord and join us over there and get access to all those things. And then also, if you will learn to do technical analysis like I do and learn a technical analysis trading strategy that, in my opinion, is super simple and very, very highly rated by not only me, it's part of Stockmo Academy, but then it's also the people who have signed up and used that strategy uh, have lauded, it, lauded its success. So if you're interested in that, there's a link down in the description for that as well. Click on the link for Stockmo Academy. Sign up for that. Use the code word doctor when you do sign up, D-O-C-T-O-R, and that's going to give you massive savings on that as well. I think you'll be very pleased with what you find. And, um, and a lot of people with learning the bread recipe that's in there at the trading strategy that's featured in there, they cover their course expenses a lot of times in just a single trade. So uh, really awesome, really cool. Check it out. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember, my friends, that learning is earning. We'll see you in the next video.